Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla De La Cruz, and I'm with the um, labor compliance team at the, at the airport authority. I'm with Carla Rubio today, so we're just going to give you a brief um, overview of what public works and prevailing wage um, requirement is. So here we go. Next slide. So um, California prevailing wage law has been in place for more than 50 years. And prevailing wage is mandated by um, federal and state to contractors participating in any government contracts or public works project. So the purpose and objective of the airport authorities uh, labor compliance program is to ensure that it meets the statutory prevailing wage requirements for both federal and state, um, also including the um, apprentices requirements. So it is in the spirit of the law. So therefore all projects here at the airport authority are subject that are subject to prevailing wage requirement are monitored accordingly. Next slide. So what is public works? Um, per California labor code 1720, um, public works um, is defined as follows that are not limited to. Um, construction under contract and paid for in whole or in part by public works funds, meaning the state funds, local funds, um, or federal monies. New construction that are um, $1,000 or more, um, it cannot be split into, you know, 50-50. It needs to be on the overall contract that, you know, the value is $1,000 or more. Any um, alteration, demolition, installation, or repair work or maintenance or warranty work is subject to um, public works requirement and prevailing wage requirements. Any pre-construction work, the survey, uh, soil testing, or anything like that is um, also considered um, public works. Final cleanup for construction jobs, um, like those cleaning services um, that goes in at the project site. Uh, before turning it over to awarding bodies is also a uh, public works. Next slide. So who needs to comply? Um, all ready mix suppliers or concrete delivery is subject to prevailing wage requirements and all the public works requirements. So proprietors, um, owners, brokers, or anybody um, who self perform uh, labor work on site uh, needs to comply with public works. Trucking companies like the dump truck drivers or who does the on and off hauling of any um, ref refuse or debris um, on site is uh, subject to public works requirements. Professional services or firms that are uh, doing surveys, uh, geotechnical services, soil or material testers, uh, must comply with public works requirements. Next slide. Public works exemptions, uh, work that are carried out by public agency with its own workforce are exempt on prevailing wage uh, requirements. Janitorial or recurring cleaning services um, that cleans like, you know, the uh, public building or guard services are also exempt from prevailing wage requirements. Um, public works project that has less than a thousand is exempt. This amount pertains to the prime contractor or the overall project value. It is not applicable to any uh, subcontracts. Also when bidding on public works, subcontractors who are under half of 1% of the total project cost are not exempt from prevailing wage or public works requirement. However, uh, they are just exempt on appearing on your sub listing on the, the bid requirements. So hopefully that's an overview of um, public works project uh, and prevailing wage requirements and exemption. You can go over with Carla Rubio for um, the uh, contractor and awarding body obligation. Thank you. Good morning again, everybody. Um, I'm Carla Rubio. I am the second Carla in the labor compliance uh, team 
here at the airport. And I'm gonna be uh, going over the awarding of body obligations as well as the contractor obligations when it comes to public works and prevailing wage. So what are some of the uh, obligations that the awarding body has? Uh, the ma major, major one is as an awarding agency, we are required to register any projects that um, are, goal, are public works projects with the DIR. And we do that using the PWC 100 form. Also, it's our responsibility going along the lines of uh, being registered with the DIR. Um, it's our responsibility to include a notice of requirements uh, described in sec a Labor Code Section 1771. Um, and that just tells you that anybody that's interested in bidding, you must be registered with the uh, DIR as a public works contractor. Also ensure that the contractors are registered when bidding on a project before during and afterwards. Um, as a public, as an awarding agency, we are required to uh, require proof of public works contractor registration. We want all, and it is the law, that all contractors um, bidding uh, on a public works project um, that are awarded and that are performing any work on a public works project in the state of California are registered with the DIR. Um, and of course, ensure that contractors are paying the correct prevailing wages and that they're in compliance with um, all prevailing wages. As an awarding body, and we'll talk about it at the end a little bit more, but Labor Code Section 1776 um, B gives the awarding body the responsibility to report any violations to the Labor Commissioner. So um, it is our duty and responsibility as an awarding body to report any violations that um, uh, where the contractor or prime or subcontractor uh, refuse to um, fix the violations that the that they're not in compliance with. Also uh, retain and withhold any amount um, for any civil wages or penalty assessment. So if we know that there's an issue um, and it's not been resolved, then we'll, it's a responsibility to withhold and retain any amount um, uh, that is gonna be needed for any civil wages or penalties that are assessed by the labor commissioner. Uh, and as well uh, as an awarding body, we are either responsible for posting it ourselves or ensuring that the contractors post the what's called the workplace postings. So these are um, the post job site notices. Um, and so those can be in a big, uh, uh, in a trailer, or you can have them in your trucks, but it is uh, our responsibility that anybody, that any contractor post these workplace postings. And they also include the um, wage uh, determinations. And the last thing I'm gonna mention on this slide is gonna be as an awarding body, we are responsible for letting you know the contractor, what wage determinations are gonna be used on um, the the projects that you're bidding on or that you're working on. We do this at the time of uh, pre-bid uh, and pre-construction meetings as well. And um, the requirements are a little bit different for the state and for the uh, federal projects. So for the state projects uh, where there's only state funding, we are required to give you the website and let you know the witch determination. It can be uh, witch determination 2020-2 uh, if we were if it was 2020. Um, and for federal uh, projects, it's uh, the responsibility of the awarding body to include the actual wage determination um, at the time of bid. So that's a small difference, but regardless, it's the awarding's responsibility to let you know the prime or contractor or tier contractor wanting to bid on a project, um, what wage determination you'll be using to bid on, on a project. The next slide, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the contractor obligations. So, of course, um, you must register with the DIR as a public works contractor if you want to bid on any uh, projects that are public works projects in the state of California. That's per Labor Code 1771-1. Um, of course, you must pay prevailing wages. Also, uh, to go along with the prevailing wages, you must pay the correct overtime wages as well as um, 
comply with any of the overtime requirements. Again, the overtime requirements may be different from um, state public works projects and federal public works projects. So it's your responsibility to know the difference and to pay the correct overtime. Uh, you must maintain and furnish certified payroll records um, at all times uh, in case you, this, the DIR can request a certified payroll record or the awarding body may request certified payroll records. So that's your responsibility to maintain and furnish and provide any certified payroll records. Um, you as a contractor must comply with apprenticeship requirements on any projects that are over $30,000. And, um, and to try to employ uh, the correct apprenticeship ratio. So, Again, we talked a little bit about the workplace postings, right? Uh, it's your responsibility as a prime contractor to post um, uh, the correct workplace postings, and those include the pay, uh, pay notice, when your employees get paid, any emergency numbers, um, or with the whistleblower uh, postings, paid sick leave, um, and uh, workplace workers' comp certification as well. And you can find those on the DIR website. Um, as a prime contractor, you must also uh, be cognizant and be aware and can do your own uh, investigations and ensure that any uh, subcontractors under you are complying with prevailing wage requirements. So, uh, so that you are not liable um, or that you don't have to pay any penalties if, uh, it is found that there were violations uh, by any of your subcontractors. So the labor code section uh, 7075B um, deals with what's called the limited prime contractor safe harbor provision. And to take advantage of that provision, you must do the four following things. You must ensure that um, all the labor codes, actually the, the entire language of the labor codes um, that have to deal with prevailing wages and uh, are included in any subcontractor that you issue. And those labor codes are 1771, 1775, 1776, 77, uh, 0.5, 1813, and 1850. Uh, also, you must review certified payrolls by your tier subcontractors and to ensure that all the prevailing wages um, are paid and there, there are no violations. If you uh, know of any violations, you must do all, everything in your power to make sure that um, the right uh, wages are paid or whatever the violation was is remedied. And uh, the last uh, thing is you must um, have your subcontractor sign an affidavit uh, signed under penalty of perjury, uh, stating that the records that they submitted to you um, into the DIR are correct and that there are no violations. So with those, by doing those four things, you can limit your liability and possibly um, save yourself some penalties. Uh, and that is for, uh, it, I believe, for your contractor obligations. We're going to go back. To, um, the last slide is... Uh, the, um, what we do here at the airport, um, a little bit more specific. So some of the things that we do here at the airport is uh, provide uh, applicable, provide uh, the contractors uh, the applicable, applicable wage determination. Uh, we conduct pre-bid uh, conferences and pre-construction meetings. We collect and review certified payrolls using LCP tracker. Uh, we monitor apprenticeship requirements, um, again, on any projects that are over $30,000, and we provide a compliance and LCB tracker training as needed, and uh, we also conduct uh, on-site project interviews to make sure that, um, that everybody is uh, complying with prevailing wage laws, and then we respond to any public work records requests that we receive either from the DIR or any other third-party agencies. And I do want to finish off um, 
by reading uh, Labor Code Section 1726A, and it reads, the body awarding the contract for public works shall take cognizance in violation of this chapter committed um, in the course of the execution of the contract and shall promptly report any suspected violation to the Labor Commissioner. I uh, made reference to this earlier in um, one of the slides. It is our responsibility and duty to, whenever we know there's a violation that is not remedied, um, then it is our responsibility to submit um, any violations to the labor commissioner. So we uh, are here to provide any help that we can. We want everybody that is working on a public works projects to pay the correct wages and to follow our apprenticeship as well as preventing wage loss. We want everybody to be successful. Um, and we also wanna make sure that all workers are being um, provided the correct pay and um, that they're safe out there on the job site. So uh, with that, uh, do you have any questions? And I believe Maria or Christine are gonna be reading those. Yes, Carla, thank you. We have one question. Um, do you have companies you can recommend that can help us stay in compliance? Um, like, uh, for managing benefits or like a third party managing or monitoring the whole overall compliance. Cause, wow. okay. Yeah, because there are companies out there that helps contractors to manage, um, for example, like fringe benefits, you know, whether where to allocate your funds like for vacation, pension, um, training contribution. There are third parties out there. You, um, you can just search for them, make sure you know that um, they would work for you, um, you know, to, to save and ensure that prevailing wage requirements are adhered to. There are also third party um, compliance out there as well who can help you um, be educated with you know, uh, public works prevailing wage requirements. So there are some companies out there for sure. And the question was for overall. Yeah, so yeah, for we don't we don't yeah. have anybody that that we uh, recommend or that we know of um, because we work on the awarding body side, yeah. but there's for sure companies out there. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah, we stay in the middle, but maybe they, maybe they, somebody they are... in the uh, in attendance that can put it on the chat. Uh, if you know of a good uh, company that focuses on labor compliance, is would be my suggestion. Yes, great suggestion. Thank you. Let's see. Um, doesn't look like we have any other questions, so let's give everybody a few minutes to see. Going once, going twice. Going twice. <laughs> I think you guys are okay. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for attending and listening in to our um, presentation. So good luck to everybody. And hopefully everyone can have the opportunity to participate on public works contracts, especially here, um, our projects here at the airport authority. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you both.